P and S implies Q. This is our conclusion. Implies Q or R. We're going to try to prove that from our premise. S and S implies T. Which then just looks like trips S, P. Okay. So we've got an arrow at the bottom here. While I'm doing the natural deduction of this, you can have a go at doing the Gibson sequence of this. From that premise, prove that conclusion. I'll just write that one up over here. S and S implies P. Therefore, P and S implies Q. Implies Q or R. You have a go at the Gibson sequence, I'll have a go at this. So we'll stop each of these other lines and see how we go. So the first thing I have is I got rid of this arrow here. So you don't have to, but it would be nice if you did your pencil sequence in roughly the same order as me, so we can kind of match them. They don't have to, but if we do match them, I got rid of this arrow on the right, so if you get rid of this arrow on the right first, that would sort of match up with. So again, proofs can be in different orders, right? Just one quick question. Yep. Um, when it comes to tests and exams, do we have to do some sort of matching like that? Um, no, you'll either be tested on one or the other. I'm just showing the relationship between the two. Right. And what I've found is useful is when I do a Henson step and I get stuck halfway through, yeah. I you actually like sometimes do natural deduction. Then it's obvious to see the next step. Yeah. If I get stuck on natural deduction, sometimes it's obvious to see the next step in Henson sequence. Right. So I use those to move me forward. Right. Not so useful in a test because you do not have the time in a test, but I think it's useful for some of the assignment questions. Right. And also just to see how the two do relate, and that you have the really different ways of thinking to make the same next step. And I still don't know what that means, and I've discussed with Jeremy, and he just says, ah, that's because the human brain works in both ways at once. Not my human brain. Um, okay. So the next thing, we've, we've, we've done blocks three to four. Now step five is coming down from step three, so that's probably the next thing we're doing. So that's getting rid of the disjunction from one. So that's a conjunction. So the next thing we're going to do is get rid of this one here. So this, so this was steps one and two. This was steps three and four. So step five is the next thing to do, obviously. Then we can do five and six at once, which is to replace this with a comma. So that's conjunction on the left, S comma, S arrow P, and everything else will be the same. So that's steps five and six. So now we have our two premises from five and six, and our premise three, we've already used our premise one, and now we're aiming to get line four. Just our, our way of showing the natural deduction. What's next? Seven. Seven is P, that comes from 5 and 6, so we're combining these two to get a P. So we're going to be getting rid of that arrow. So I'm just following the natural deduction to tell me what to do. Arrow on the left. Now that means this will be in the conclusion of something, and this will be in the premise of something. I've got this premise over here, everything else I'll just show over there. Uh, 
Okay, so that was line 7. Done. What's line 8? P and S. Ah, this is interesting. I'm joining together. This S and this P, which I can't put here, I'm matching this P up against here. So it's 8, I'm only doing that so I can get to 9. 9 is getting rid of the arrow. We're only interested in getting rid of rules because this always gets rid of things. So 9, we're getting rid of the arrow from 3. So we're getting rid of this arrow here next. Arrow on the left. That will be 8, which is an intermediate step in 9. So this is already, that's already done, S implies S. And this Q is going to become a premise on something, and this P and S is going to become a conclusion on something. This premise will go somewhere, I'll put it here. This conclusion will go somewhere, I'll put it here. Okay, so now we've got a problem. Q does imply Q or R, that's good, but P does not imply P and S. So that tells me I want another S here, just to get these to, to work. Which makes sense, because in fact in 6 we added, sorry in 8 we added an extra S, but we just built this by our rule, we need to get another S there, which means we need another S here, which means we need another S here, so somewhere in here we needed to do some sort of copy L as an extra step. We need an extra line in there, put our extra S in. We didn't know until we saw we need an extra S here. So we're going to do the and um, left first, and then we'll do the copy. Yeah, so this will be one line and this will be the next line above it. Right. Yes. The and left puts them to the one S, and then we do a second line and right. put this in. And of course, in the draft you don't know you need that. So, um, yeah. When you're, if you're doing a graph, you can sometimes do these on every second line, so you can slip a, a copy in if you need it. Yeah. But that's a pain. So I'm just following from the natural deduction what it's doing. It's got me down to here. And now, what's the next thing we have? From 9, I still need to connect, connect up to 4. That's just a, a description introduction, which makes sense. That's what we're doing over here. From Q to Q or R. That's this junction on the right. Oh. Um, which is, I guess, step four. And P and S to P and S, that's exactly lines five and seven going to line eight. So that's going to split because we're getting rid of this arrow on the right, giving us P implies P and S implies S. Or for us, I guess it's this S here. And that is our line 8. So whenever we've got an introduction line, it often goes sort of a little bit later when you're breaking things down. Oops, that's the wrong pen lid. But in some sense, this natural deduction proof told us how to build all of this. Which is kind of cool. So if I give you a Jensen sequent, do you think you can use that to help to tell you how to build a natural deduction proof the same way? Mm. No, you're probably right. <laughs> how about if I give you another natural deduction proof and have a go at doing the Jensen sequence from that, like we did here? Do you think that would help? You see how they connect? Let's give it a go. I can see you guys are uh, brimming over with enthusiasm. Mm. That looks like a nice small one. Let's do this one instead. Well, let's put a double arrow in it. You guys don't have to do double arrows. Let's do taking double arrows out of the box or get the sequence. Let's do E4. That's not too long. So we've already got the natural deduction proof there. Fill up the Henson sequence using the numberings to make sure you can see what the next move is. So one, two, two, three, and four all the way up. Pulling it in and see if we can get the Henson sequence that way. And it would be the same sort of thing as you would do otherwise. This kind of matters because gets and sequence are going to get hard in the same way natural deduction got hard when we start adding negation and double negation and that sort of stuff. 
So having both sets of tools available is going to be useful. Okay. Can I wrap this off? down the conjunction on the premise. So that's what we're going to do. That was steps one and two. Which is probably the easiest thing to do anyway, but it's nice that that is the first thing to do. R and P implies Q, comma Q implies R and P. Really? I thought that it is. Okay. Therefore, P implies Q or Q implies P. Okay, step five. five. Two comes straight from five, so it says we only need one of the disjuncts, we can get the whole thing. Did you even mean to write P implies instead of Q implies? Do you think this will like a T? Okay. Yeah, sorry, my bad. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I thought, I thought it was a P. Yeah, yeah. Just because I wrote a P doesn't mean it was. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Yes, that's um, my error. Cool. Um, so yeah, 5 says we can, that this comes just from this here. So that was not the next thing I would have done looking at the Stenson sequence, right? It's, it's not obvious at all to check away one of these. But hey, the natural reduction proof tells us that this thing on the right came from the second one of them. So that's disjunction on the right hand side of this, and we're coming from the second one of those disjuncts. Disjunction right two. And I guess all of this is whatever it was before. So Q. Okay, so that was line five. Okay, now next thing we're doing is 6 and 7, which is getting rid of the arrow on the right. And that's good, I think I did say that if you get an arrow on the right, it's the one to do first. Getting rid of this arrow on the right, and that's going to be line 6 to 7. So keep all our premises, and this bit here is going to become an extra premise or assumption, which is all the same sort of idea. P, then from R and P I can get P. That sounds really good, but have I used this thing here at all? No. Mm. That's um, a worry. In fact, if we look up there, number three, we don't use number three at all on the whole right hand side. So number three line isn't needed. Looking at that. So you can cross up number three. I mean, it's a, actually, you can cross up number three. I was going to write on that screen and realize not to, but I can just do this. We don't need that line. And that tells us we don't need this either. Which means this conjunction, we're only keeping the right hand side of that conjunction. We're only keeping the second part. Looking at the natural deduction, we realise we didn't need this part, so let's just not have it. You could have kept it up here, and it would cause you a problem, um, which we will see later. I might just put a little box in there to remind us that there could be that there was a formula there. 
so that it causes a problem when deleted again. Okay, so now how are we going to get P? Well, if you combine this arrow here, which is what we're doing there in line 8, line 8 is getting rid of the arrow in here, that's the arrow in 4, so we'll get rid of that arrow, which is an arrow on the left. That means Q will become the conclusion of something, R and P will become the premise of something. We've got another Q premise and a P conclusion. And this box thing, which was our old formula, wherever it went was going to cause us problems. Because like this is good, and this does not need anything else. So the extra premise we had it here would have caused us a problem at this stage. Okay, so now that was line 8, wasn't it? Now we need to prove P from R and P. So first thing is, well, good, it's valid, we can prove P from R and P. We couldn't have proved P from, say, R and Q, so that's good. Now we need to go through the moves. This is the thing on the left-hand side. It doesn't actually correspond to anything in that proof. A little fiddly but sometimes don't. So that gives us P, therefore P, we're only keeping half of this conjunct. Conjunct on the left, we're keeping the second half of it. And that's the end. So this step here was not a step in our proof. Oh, hang on, it was, it was from 8 to 7. So every step in my conception up to a numbered step. And we did some things we really didn't expect. So this move here we didn't expect, that the natural deduction told us about. This step here we kept both, we went back and got rid of one of them when we didn't need it. Because our proof, again, up there told us we didn't need one of those lines. So a natural deduction proof told us how to create a short, elegant natural deduction proof here, where you're making some, uh, hence some secret proof here, where you're making some odd moves without realizing why you need to do them. Okay, so we can see natural deduction helps to get some sequence. Let's see if Gensen sequence can help us do natural deduction. Obviously, I believe they do, but you know I believe all sorts of rubbish. So let's get a natural deduction proof. 